Like many model scenery builders, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. In fact, I'll often listen to passages from the books as I work just to keep me in the mood. So when I came across these miniatures online, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. But I don't really have the time for painting minis, so I needed help. This is the Barrels Out of Bond set from Games Workshop and it was painted for me by Darren from We Paint Minis. Please do go and check out his YouTube channel and also his Instagram page. I've put a link for both in the description below. I'd be very surprised if you didn't already know that this set comprises of 13 dwarves plus Bilbo. So onto the diorama build and this started life as a simple craft box which I picked up from a local store which I then basically cut into shape using a hacksaw. This took a little while to do and it was a little bit tedious but it was also fairly easy. I had no real plan with it other than to make a kind of gentle slope with a river trough in it. and eventually I got it into a fairly pleasing kind of shape at which point I broke open my box of sandpaper and just went over the edges leaving a nice smooth lip. For the land inside the box I decided to use extruded polystyrene. I had several offcuts lying around and I stuck these in place using Styragoo by the Hotwire Foam Factory. And then I used the Hotwire Foam Factory's sculpting tool with the arm tensioner to cut the foam into the basic canyon shape I was after. The more foam offcuts you use, the less expensive sculpt mould you'll have to use later. So I carried on building up the model with bits of foam I had lying around and sticking them in with more styragoo. And then it was time to add the sculpt mould. I used about three quarters of a cup's worth here with a dash of water, just enough to make a stiff kind of paste. And then I started building up the river banks and covering the riverbed. being sure to fill in any gaps between the foam and between the foam and the wood before sculpting some rocks into the riverbanks which is why I like to keep the sculpt mould fairly stiff. For painting the rocks of the riverbank I used a variety of washes by Vallejo and also some homemade black wash and the process for achieving a realistic rocky look was achieved by just spotting the surface with the various washes making sure they each overlap and that there is a little bit of white showing as well I used my brush just to bleed the edges out I even used a bit of flesh wash and a touch of green 
though I'd be going over the rocks later with some moss and lichen. And then when all those washes had mostly dried I went over the whole lot with my homemade black wash which is the equivalent of Nuln Oil by Games Workshop so it's a lot more dilute than the Vallejo equivalents and this just tied all the other colours together nicely and helped accentuate the fissures in the rock. As this would be a predominantly blue river I decided to use blue for the undercoat With the blue epoxy that was going to be going over all of this and the amount of water effects that would be applied over the top of the epoxy, I'm not even sure that this step is actually necessary. And now for the moss. I didn't actually want a full on dusting, so I used some Woodland Scenics Fine Turf, this is their green blend, and some super glue gel which I applied to the surface of the rocks using a cocktail stick or actually this is a kebab stick or a skewer depending on where you live anyway I dipped another one of those into some water and then into the woodland scenics fine turf and applied this over the super glue on the rock surface And for further unnecessary riverbed decoration I decided to use some scenic glue over which I would sprinkle some of the fine turf to give the bed a mossy kind of look that would then be completely hidden from view by the epoxy and the water effects. I used some more scenic glue along the riverbanks and then sprinkled over some beige grout. Now I would recommend wearing gloves for this because grout can be a skin irritant. CFS epoxy is fairly thick but it also cures in about 6 hours as opposed to the 24 hours you see on normal hobby epoxies. It's also dead easy to mix, it's equal parts by volume but in actual fact I mixed up far too much here the model could only take about half this amount so I ended up embedding random objects in random moulds I had lying around I mean you'd have thought I'd be better at judging the amount of resin needed by now but it appears not anyway it's worth mixing the epoxy fairly slowly to avoid introducing too many bubbles into the mixture and I know you can buy specific epoxy resin tints but I've only ever really used acrylic paint or wash which just does the job perfectly for the dam I used clear duct tape which has a nice glossy outside to it I cut a piece big enough to go over the end of the river and stuck this over the sticky side of the other piece of duct tape I applied this over the end of the model so the shiny side was facing into the river and because this river was going to flow downhill I needed to jack the end of the model up and leave it like this while I poured the epoxy and while the epoxy dried over the course of six hours or so as the bubbles rise to the surface of the resin you can pop them using a soldering torch just pass the torch lightly over the surface being careful not to linger in any one spot for too long as I did here this would have been a disaster had this been a slow moving river but luckily it wasn't going to be I was going to be applying some rather thick water effects in this case some crystal clear polymer by Sudol, which actually has a bluish tint to it so hardly crystal clear Anyway I thinned it with a bit of isopropyl alcohol, not too much, just enough to make it pliable and so that it doesn't mould itself into stiff peaks along your river. 
and this can basically just be dolloped along the surface and pushed around into waves and rapids using your lolly stick. Yes, lolly stick, I'm English. I know some of you find some of my phrasing bewildering and or amusing. Here in the UK, a popsicle is an ice lolly. These water effects should be dry within the hour, but I'd probably leave it a couple of hours just to be on the safe side. And then it's time to remove your dam. Uh, never mind that bit of leaking there. I tidied that up later with a bit of sandpaper. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Deco Mache Decoupage Glue. This is their gloss variety. is almost as good as Mod Podge for making ripples. But in this instance, all I needed it for was applying a gloss layer over the top of the polymer, which can have a bit of a satin finish to it. And now it was time for the real fun to begin, which of course was adding Thorin's company to the model. I've painted plenty of Lord of the Rings models in my time, but a company of dwarves and a hobbit would have left me blind for two weeks I reckon, so I'm really grateful to Darren from We Paint Minis for painting these for me, and he's done such a fantastic job. And after a test fit of the models, they got stuck down with some Mod Podge brush stroke. This is just a thicker version of their gloss, and because it dries completely clear, it helped to fill in the gaps underneath the models. Be aware though that it does take a little bit longer to dry, approximately 24 hours before it goes completely clear. There's poor old Bilbo at the back wondering what the hell he's unleashed. So now it was time for the other really fun part of the build adding some wonderful scenics by dioramapreservo.com which I'd be sticking down with some War World Scenics basing glue and some super glue gel. I always tend to get out more scenics from my cupboard than I actually end up using, but it's good to have on hand everything you think you might need. A lot of this material can be used in a variety of ways. Here I cut up some of these long vines to make a kind of ferny bush. Dipping the ends in super glue gel helped them to stick much more quickly and much firmer than if I was using basing glue. But you can't really make too many mistakes because you'll end up ripping a whole lot of other foliage off when you try and remove them. It's good to have a variety of foliage on your model but not too much of a variety or it'll end up looking too random. A bit of Citadel white scar helped with white water effects. Again, I was careful not to go overboard with this and also careful not to get it too much over the models. A little bit over the barrels was fine because there would be splashes after all. And then a bit of brown wash helped to accentuate the churning nature of the water. And then with some blue wash, I just toned down a bit of the white water where I felt I'd gone a bit too far. And then I went over the surface again with a bit more of the gloss decoupage glue. And the final step was painting the sides with black gesso. Well, there we are. I hope you enjoyed this Barrels Out of Bond diorama build video. It was certainly something different for me to take on and something I found incredibly enjoyable. A huge thanks again to Darren from We Paint Minis for painting the miniatures for me. Please do go and check out his YouTube channel. 
And a huge thanks as always to my Patreon supporters and everyone who has bought a diorama kit from my website higheyeworkshop.co.uk recently. If you'd like to join my exclusive workshopping Facebook group, plus get a discount from my kits and get early access to these videos to boot, or you'd just like to support me, please do check out my Patreon page. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheerio!